Hey everyone, this is Bo. Um, over the past uh, about week and a half or so, I've been working on an outfeed table for my table saw. Um, I think I've mentioned in some previous videos, I moved into a new house, got a new shop space, had a little extra room. In my old shop, I had my workbench um, act as my outfeed table for my table saw. But in this space, I'm able to squeeze a little bit more furniture in here. And so um, I built a dedicated outfeed table. I'll bring in for some close-ups here coming on, but essentially the, the statistics are here about 58 by about 36 for the top. Um, it's got, of course, the miter grooves um, to use with some of my jigs and my miter gauge, as well as T-track in the top. Um, the top is made from two pieces of three-quarter inch MDF. It's then trimmed out in a combination of ash and some maple, just some leftover scrap I had laying around. Um, the bottom of it has two big open areas that I'll, I'll bring around and show you here. And then as well, it has two large, large drawers for whatever gets accumulated in there. Right now, it's some clamps and an air hose and a hammer. Um, but uh, one of the things I didn't account, one of the mistakes I made uh, designing this was I didn't account for enough height of the leveling feet that go on the bottom. I gave myself a half an inch. Um, that was a little too tight, so it's <laughs> all the leveling feet are bottomed out and it's just level with the table saw. So I got pretty lucky there uh, it, it's, that it still worked out and it wasn't too high, but uh, I, I did cut a little close. So let me bring in, I'll get the camera and just kind of show you a couple of the, the spaces here in the T-Track setup. So here's the, here's the top, just a, kind of a simple T-Track setup, just two parallel ones along the length and then some perpendicular ones coming the other way here. Um, I bought uh, some of these intersection kits, uh, which are nice uh, that they, they fill it out, but uh, I got kind of, I didn't want to buy a whole bunch more, so I only, I bought four of them and that's all I used. The rest just had these open space in the middle, which I don't see being a problem. Uh, these drawers are pretty large. Let me zoom down here. So these are, they're about, about six inches deep and they're about 24 by 24 wide. You can see that cavity down there. It's got my air compressor, and then I just shoved a small shop back in it that we use from time to time. On the other side, it's the same exact thing. Um, and you can see the leveling feet. Uh, I might be able to make them out down here. You can see those are actually all, they're, so they're all bottomed out uh, as low as they can go. It's just, just barely sitting off the ground. On this side, it's the same, more of the same. Uh, you got a big drawer, got my, my spray gun, uh, some of the filters, my box, uh, eye box from Incra, and then underneath it's got my um, my Fuji sprayer, and then the uh, uh, my actual paint sprayer underneath there. Overall, it turned out pretty nice. So I'm excited to use it. Um, just building this outfeed table without an outfeed table was a challenge with some of the larger pieces. So I'm, I'm happy to have this here now. Um, and I'm gonna be putting it through its paces. Uh, the video goes over quite a bit of the detail. Uh, not much of me talking in front of the camera, just really the process of going through it. Um, the one thing I didn't mention at the very beginning, I guess I mentioned that the top was made out of three quarter inch MDF, two pieces sandwiched together and then uh, trimmed out. The, the drawers are all half inch plywood. They're just um, rabbits. And then I pegged the rabbits with some dowels and they have a false front that I trimmed out in some oak. And then they do have a, uh, a face frame on um, both, both ends of the cabinet to give it a little bit more rigidity. And those are also made from oak and those are um, half lapped together and then glued and pocket screwed from the inside um, to hold them in place. Since it's such a long cabinet, it's hard to get clamps all the way across this big thing. So using pocket screws was kind of my, my solution. Uh, I also use them for some of the, uh, for the shelves where they hook to a, a center divider run through the cabinet here. I also use pocket screws to hold them together with glue. Um, so the screws are my clamps, essentially. That's all I have. Um, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and the build process. Thanks. All right, so here's the plan. You can see on the left side of the picture, I have a drawer opening on top of about 8 inches, and then the opening below is 25 and a half inches with an overall height of 37. The next picture here will show the top roughly 58 by 36 with a six inch overhang for dust collection. All right, getting into the project here. I had uh, bought all my plywood from Home Depot. They did do a lot of the large uh, cuts so I could fit into my car. 
but then here you can see I'm using the track saw to cut everything down to to size this is one of the uh, rough cuts for the shell after the rough cuts uh, I have a uh, I have two pieces the two large sides here stacked on top of each other one was just a little bit longer than the other I left that in intentionally so I come back with a flush trim bit and make sure they're both exactly the same size All right, so now I'm moving on to cutting the shelf pieces. Uh, there'll be four identical pieces that are on the left-hand side and right-hand side of the cabinet. I have to wait until the saw completely shuts off to remove the piece since I don't have an outfeed table. So it just takes a little bit longer to do it this way. Alright, here are those shelf pieces. I am cutting the, uh, the other direction. Uh, the first time was cutting them to width, and this is cutting them to, to final length. And as you can see, creating an outfeed table without an outfeed table is a little tricky. You gotta take things a little slower. I have the dado blade set up in my table saw. It took me about uh, about five tries to get the width dialed in. And I'm making the large center divider dado here. Uh, make this in both the side pieces first and make sure they're set up from the same edge uh, on both sides. So if I'm off a little bit left or right, at least they'll be the same. After doing the center divider, Leaving the dado blade in there, I'm moving on to the the lower shelf in this cut. Uh, that's a, about an inch and a half off the ground. And you can see I've, I've gotten a little smarter. I've put a roller stand on the outfeed for my table saw. And now here I'm setting up for the top shelf, or yeah, the top shelf, which will be the um, essentially where the drawer will be. It'll be above this cut. Looking at my plan, taking some measurements, cut this dado in the right spot. All right, so I need a bunch of horizontal braces added to the top of the cabinet to support the the top. And so the process here is um, using a Forsner bit to drill out a majority of the waste. I'll then come back with a coping saw and once again clear out a majority of the waste. After I get that cut through, I will clamp a, a small router jig onto the top of the piece. Clamp that in place and then use a flush trim bit or a pattern bit, the bearings on the top, and then uh, and then clean all that up to be a perfect size for those 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 strips.
And then I'll have to do a little cleanup with a chisel and then that piece fits in there nice and snug. All right, so now starts the glue up process. I did a quick dry fit, got some of my little red 90 degree clamp, clamping blocks in place. And here I'm applying glue to the dados, knocking the shelves, this would be the lower shelf into place. I'm clamping it to the center divider, so the way the piece is oriented now, the side of the cabinet is on the ground. Since I don't have clamps quite long enough to span the entire cabinet, I'm using pocket hole screws where, where the upper and lower shelf will meet the center divider. Putting those, I use glue uh, and the pocket hole screws act as clamps until that glue dries and then I just leave the pocket holes in there, or the pocket hole screws in there. The second side is the same as the first, uh, just clamp it in place, get it aligned, drive in some pocket screws into that center divider to hold it. Once the four shelf pieces are in, it's now time to lay the other side on top of this, uh, use an assortment of clamps and calls to get that located and get that clamp down. All right, next up here after clamping up, the cabinet was to get ready to laminate the top. Here I'm putting in a bunch of screws to use as, as clamps essentially to hold the two pieces together. Uh, definitely needed a, uh, a beer after that. Cl glue up and there's 77 holes all together, six inch on center. All right, moving on to laminating the pieces of MDF together. Applying a liberal amount of glue spreading it out, and then bringing the second piece um, on top here. All right, I'm just roughly clamping this in place. I'm going to apply a little pressure in the middle here with, with the jig uh, and uh, get some of the glue to kind of squeeze and even out. And then I'm clamping it to my bench top, which is a known flat surface. One mistake I did make here is the piece that is on the top in this view has all the screws, but it's also slightly oversized because I wanted, I wanted to flush trim it up to the lower piece. Well, all the glue runs with gravity, so I had a bunch of glue squeeze out to clean up first before I could flush trim it. So if I do it again, I would have these flipped around. All right, next up here was flush trimming the top piece. Uh, to match up with the bottom. The bottom piece was about an eighth inch smaller in, in both directions just to give me a little wiggle room and clamping that upper piece onto it. Like I mentioned, I made a mistake with how I oriented those those boards. I should have my uh, uh, the top piece be my, my final dimensions so I wouldn't have a bunch of glue squeeze out to work with. Next up was to rip some stock for the face frame of the cabinets. Uh, this is some, some leftover oak I had that I am cutting down to uh, an inch and a quarter. I'm adding uh, half lap joints here to the face frame. Uh, they're a little too narrow, they're only about an inch, inch and a quarter. A little too narrow for two pocket screws, so half laps work pretty well and just, just batching these out one after another. Here's the glue up of the half lap joints, nothing too exciting. Spread some glue, put them in place, clamp them down. Probably the most critical step here in the center um, is to ensure that it's square before you apply final clamping pressure. While the face frames are drying, I turn my attention to the top. 
Here I'm adding the edging all the way around the top. Just uh, it's a combination of uh, maple and ash boards that I had. You can see from the shot here I have one. The long boards have a rabbit cut into the corner. Uh, I'm just clamping them tight, shooting 18 gauge nails to hold them in place while the glue dries. And then I come back and uh, do the two other ends and the, those two ends fit in those rabbits that are cut there. So at this time the cabinet carcass looks like this. The top support slats are in. You can see the overhang between the table saw and the cabinet. That is to allow the dust collection to exit out the side and get to my dust collector. Um, I, you can see the pocket hole screws in the left lower cabinet in that top shelf. Those are there to attach the face frame. Once again, having long clamps, uh, not having long clamps, I need to use more pocket screws to, to clamp things together. Now I'm turning my attention to the drawers. Uh, one thing you didn't see in that previous shot is I had to add some half inch plywood to where the drawer slides are going to go to get them uh, what would be inside of the face frame a little bit. So here I'm cutting the groove for the bottom. Uh, it's a uh, trial and error. Uh, make the first cut the same on all the drawers, drawer pieces, but then keep sliding the fence over till I get that perfect fit on the drawer bottom and then cut the rest of them. And there I had the fit, and so now I'm batching out the rest of the drawer parts. The drawer construction I chose is going to be reinforced rabbit joints. So the the rabbits get cut in the left and right hand side drawer pieces uh, and then they will get drilled and dowels, dowels hammered in there for reinforcement. This is nice because you can leave the front and back till the very end to cut so you get that perfect width drawer. Moving on to the glue up of the drawers, uh, applying glue to the rabbits. Add a little bit in the corner of the groove for the bottom since they're plywood, uh, you can glue the bottoms in. I never apply glue in the middle of a, uh, of a drawer where the bottom sits in there. Sometimes it'll make the, the sides either bow, uh, bow in with the, with the drawer bottom if it's undersized a little bit, so I don't apply glue in the very center. One thing to mention here is that the drawer sides and the front and back, of course, are, are half-inch plywood. The bottom is, is actually made from, from some 5 millimeter underlayment. Uh, when I stopped by the Home Depot, um, they didn't have any full sheets of quarter-inch MDF, which I typically make my drawer bottoms from. And these drawers were too big for a 2 foot by 4 foot sheet of MDF. The drawer is a little bit over 2 foot wide. Lots of clamps hold this together. Um, just because of the height of the drawer, it's about uh, seven and a half inches tall or so. So, need a handful of clamps to get that to get that joint nice and tight. After the glue dried on the top, I'm here flushing it up with a jack plane, starting in the corners and then working my way up and down the sides. Once I get really close, I come back with, with the sander and just make sure those, those are all nice and smooth and cleaned up.
All right, time to attach face frame. Uh, I have the cabinet blocked up on uh, on a large piece of wood, and here I'm getting the face frame roughly aligned and uh, making sure that everything's covered. Shoot a couple of pin nails into the in through the face frame and into the cabinet just to hold it in place. And I'm gonna come back here with pocket screws and uh, and securely fasten it to the to the cabinet. I should also mention the reason that I had to block this up is because I put the pocket hole screws in the very bottom of the lower shelf and I don't have good access to it so that's why it's blocked up so high. Face frame was a little tall, a uh, little I made it uh, about an eighth inch oversized so it's a little tall on top and here you see some bunch of sawdust flying I'm just using a flush trim bit and a router to, to clean up the top edge so the, the top sits flush and uh, isn't held up by that. Next up, adding a nice, uh, a large chamfer to the, the edge of the top, just so nothing gets hung up or caught on or chips away. After the drawer boxes came out of the clamps, it was now time to add the dowel reinforcement. So uh, I bought some quarter inch dowel material and then I'm drilling the hole just slightly under quarter inch. Um, apply a liberal amount of glue on the dowel and, and pound it in. After that, I cut them flush with a flush trim saw and then uh, do some sanding. I made some false fronts for the drawers. They're simple half inch plywood with some of that same oak hardwood that was used for the face frame. Just using glue and blue tape. Uh, the blue tape acts as clamps, just as long as you uh, stretch it a little bit as you apply it. After the glue on the drawer fronts, uh, dried. I brought over the bench and flushed it up with a jack plane and a sander. Uh, on one of these I did I did end up chipping the plywood a little bit but luckily that could go on the, the inside where no one would see it. I applied a coat of shellac to everything and then two coats of water-based polyurethane with, uh, with a spray gun. And then it was time to attach the top. Uh, you can see here i am uh, got the top in place, making sure it's flat and level, uh, and then attaching it through the bottom using a uh, right hand drill and a small, a small uh, impact driver to get those screws through those stretchers and up into the top. Before I put that top in place, I laid out all my T-Track, where it was going to go, where the miter slots had to go, and removed the screws that I used to, to hold the two pieces of MDF together since I didn't want to send my router bit through a bunch of screws. So I did remove them, uh, so we had to, had to somewhat plan ahead with this step and make sure those screws were taken out. Here I'm using my track saw and a uh, router attachment to route out the miter grooves and then route out the three-quarter inch recesses for the T-Track. Uh, my three-quarter inch straight bit was the perfect size for the T-Track I, T -track I purchased. By laying out my T-Track head time and removing those screws, I, I didn't actually hit any screws. Um, I did hit a handful of nails of the, the small brad nails that I shot in from the, for the edging. I did catch a couple of those. To square up the ends for the T-Track, I'm um, just using chisel. Square up those so the T-Track fits nice and tight inside there. Moving on to cutting the T-Track that runs in the uh, 
the opposite direction or the perpendicular direction here. Uh, you can also see a, a finished drawer uh, behind me in the in the picture with uh, with a handle attached. That step of laying out the T track ahead of time and really planning ahead for it made made routing the recesses really easy. I already had the marks on the top where I wanted it all to go. It was a matter of just lining up the, the router with it, clamping down the track, and then routing it out. All right, I'm moving on to cutting the actual T-track pieces here. Uh, I'm using a utility knife just to score a line um, where I want to cut it. And then I use a, a hammer and a, a three quarter inch piece of plywood to drive that T-track down into the recesses. It's a pretty tight fit, so uh, I need to uh, use that three quarter inch piece of, of plywood to, to fully seat it. After you seat it, Use a self-centering Vix bit to drive in some, uh, to drill some holes, and then I use these six by one inch grabber style screws uh, with my impact driver and drove them home. Here are some sh finished shots of the outfeed table, all the T-tracks in place, the miter slots are all cut in. It's all leveled up with the table saw. Here's an end view showing the air compressor and a small shop back underneath there. The other side's got some uh, spray equipment. These drawers are really large. They'll come in handy with a bunch of storage in the future. All in all, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Thank, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. Please like. Thanks.